De Brehan had to be very careful, for he was himself liable to damages if he delivered a false or an unjust judgment. Patrick Western Joyce There are stories in the myths about the legendary Moran, a Brehan who wore a metal collar around his neck, a piece of Gaelic jewellery called a torque, that was said to tighten and choke him if he ever gave a false judgment, and would only loosen its grip when the true judgment had been spoken. With no central body to appoint judges over cases, the Brehans operated in a sort of judicial open market, as people were free to choose their own judge. As a result of this, those with the best reputations for fairness and knowledge of the law would rise to become the most desirable judges and sometimes even rulers. This feature also served to protect against changes to the law because Bretons were required to interpret according to the customs already established. Deviation from these customs would mean it was unlikely that such a Breton would be chosen again and so their entire reputation rested upon making true and just judgments. As the learned repositories of the traditional laws, the Bretons were highly influential and were often aligned to chieftains or kings, who in turn were seen as the protectors of the laws. The Bretons' fee was usually one twelfth of the amount being disputed in a case. While the Bretons operated in an open market, offering their services as adjudicators and interpreters of the law to whoever should require them, they were self regulated by a need to maintain a good status and a record of fairness and accuracy in the eyes of both their peers and their potential clients. Giving a false judgment could have a drastic effect on a Breton's livelihood. In an important contrast with our modern systems of law, the Bretons were not immune from suit, neither were they immune from paying penalties in the event that they gave a false judgment. A judgment could be considered false or unjust if the Breton failed to pursue a detailed line of reasoning or procedure, if the Breton failed to account for certain factors relevant to the case, or if a better, more just outcome existed but was not recognised by the Breton overseeing the case. Since the Breton's trade was built on his reputation as a fair and learned judge, his status was the very first thing to be affected if he gave a false judgment. This could have devastating effects on his career and his ability to earn money, so he had to get it right. Next, he stood to lose financially, since a Breton was also required to pay a personal surety when overhearing a case by putting up a sum of property that was in proportion to the amount in dispute. If the Breton gave an opinion that was found to be unjust, biased or otherwise tainted, he would forfeit his surety to the parties of the dispute. Finally, because people held the articulation of justice in the highest esteem and even regarded the Brehan's judgment as having mystical significance like that of a priest, we can understand why superstition and mythology arose around a Brehan spoken judgments. Believing that such pronouncements were divinely inspired and the Brehan acting as a channel for divine justice and truth, it was written that a Brehan who gave a false judgment would suffer a supernatural penalty as well, such as the breaking out in boils or blemishes. A parallel can be drawn here with the belief that the rule of a good king would lead to prosperity and bountiful crops, while the rule of a bad king would cause the crops to fail. Which brings us back to the collar of Moran. This magical collar, the collar of truth, would tighten if Moran, this ancient Breton, gave a false judgment. It would choke him and it would only loosen its grip when he had spoken a true judgment. So the Breton stood to lose financially, reputationally and even supernaturally if he gave a false judgment. <laughs>